After you've created the initial poster effect, the next stage of the drawing, and this is pretty much the middle of the drawing, stage 5, even though it doesn't look like it's getting very complete, um, you're actually pretty far along. Um, this stage, you're going to develop the shadow core and the cast shadow. And the core of the shadow is the darkest part of the shadow on an object, and typically um, you use that for more rounded forms. You can see that now there's a little dark band going along the dividing line between light and shadow on the little ball and on the uh, cylinder here. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is go through and just uh, push the cast shadows down a little bit more um, and differentiate between compound shadows. So for instance, there's a little bit of doubling up of, of these um, of the shadows around the ball, so I've uh, differentiated that. And then um, I've also differentiated some of the shadows on the book as well. And then at any point, if you feel like you missed an area, you can go back in, into and reposterize any area that you want. Um, the book here is has a curved binding because it's been read so much. So I have to go back in and begin to differentiate uh, that curvature. Um, it's kind of like a negative shadow core or a, an opposite, uh, the opposite of a shadow core. This box actually kind of has a rounded edge, so I wanted to be sure that I could get that across, so I went down the edge and um, differentiated that a little bit. The ground shadow of the box is pretty dark compared to um, the light side and the ball, so you know, I went through that and then uh, any place that I see just slight differences in the shadows, um, I'm going to go through and, and make some changes, make some differentiations. Again, I keep saying differentiation because I, I'm not trying to get the shadows to be their exact correct darkness relative to each other. All I'm trying to do is create um, the, a setup of differences. Later on, we'll compare each value and make sure that that one value next to the other has the same has the correct distance apart, and that you know one shadow is darker than the next shadow, and so on. But right now, I just want to make sure that each shadow is kind of different. This book that's kind of standing up on its edge has a, a very definitive um, two-part shadow where there where one part of the shadow is dark and one part of the shadow is just slightly lighter than that. So you can see that differentiation coming in. And then um, differentiating and reposterizing around the, the little cylinder on top of the box, making sure that everything's light enough there. And then um, going into the book binding again. I'm just trying to find every little little structural detail that I can um, and differentiating that. Um, here I have a little bit of background showing, and I, want, and I wanted to be sure that the background is uh, definitively different from the foreground, so I'm indicating that the background is just a little bit darker. It's up to you how much background detail that you want to include if you do have any kind of background detail in your still life. Um, the guide that I always think of is, is it useful for your composition? If it is, then include it. If it's not useful for your composition, then don't include it. Um, so if there's a, a lot of detail in the background, you may not want to emphasize that. So you may need to compress and eliminate some detail for the sake of your drawing. And that's kind of the strength of drawing versus photography, is that you can um, make edits and you can not include stuff relatively easily. Um, with a photograph, you must include everything that the camera sees. That's just how it is. Um, unless you want to spend a lot of time editing. So in drawing, you don't you can automatically exclude some things that aren't useful for your composition. So once you finish this stage of differentiating shadow cores and cast shadows, um, then you should have a still life that's looking pretty uh, far along.